Ah, Mr. Hancock, what a delightful meal this is. I really must congratulate you. Oh, my dear vicar, it's a pleasure. So glad you could come to dinner. We don't often get the opportunity of entertaining a member of the clergy in my humble abode. <laughs> yes, it's most gratifying to converse with one who is so up on the theology and ecclesiastical chat as your good self. <laughs> Isn't that right, everybody? Uh, yeah. uh, uh... Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Most oh, yes. yes. <laughs> charming. <laughs> Thank you very much. I do enjoy the personal contact with my parishioners. I try and visit them in their homes at least once a year. And why not? <laughs> Must cut down on the old grub bills at home, I always say. <laughs> yes, well, uh, it isn't the prime reason for my visits. I try no, 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 of course uh, not. It was just a little joke on my part. <laughs> I am a comedian, you know. Oh, yes. Ha, 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 ha. Yes. <laughs> I did enjoy your sermon on Sunday. Oh. Yes, most stimulating. And it struck home amongst many present, I may add. I don't know whether you could see from where you were standing, but quite a few feet were shifting uneasily, I noticed. Ah. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it, Mr. Hancock. You don't think I overemphasize the passage on the evils of drink? Oh, no, 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 no. Most timely, most timely. Unfortunately, in this borough, we have many slaves of the grape. Ah. Tragic. It was tragic. Another glass of port, Vicar? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, a delightful vintage. Yes, well, I do pride myself on knowing a good deal of the ritual of wine drinking. I'm an acknowledged expert. Not that I imbibe myself, I hasten to add. Oh, quite, quite, quite. I just know all about it. Yes. How many different brands of wine do you have in your cellar? Oh, two. <laughs> Red and white. <laughs> Oh, uh, and a bottle of half and half. Oh, uh, you mean the pink wine, Vin Rosé. Vin Rosé. Oh, no, 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 no. No, actually, we had half a bottle of red and half a bottle of white left over from the last party, so we we bunged it all into one bottle so we could get the fortunes on the other one. <laughs> but do please tell me more about your work in Africa. Uh, for sure, I'm not boring you. No, 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 not at all. We'd all be most elevated. <laughs> Bill, Bill, Bill. Uh, uh, is he gone? <laughs> no. Oh! Oh! Oh, dear me, was that your foot? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I must apologise to my friend, Vicar. He drops off. Very unfortunate head wound he received in the war. Yeah, a waff sloshed me with yes, a bottle of... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes, a waff. Yes, a waff. Yes, a West African hussar, that is. <laughs> Accidentally hit him with his spear. Terrible blow. Terrible blow. How is the birth strong enough? Oh, excellent, excellent. A most delicious dinner altogether. I, I must congratulate the chef. Oh, thank you very much, Vicar. I do my best with the limited means at my disposal. It's very difficult cooking a five-course meal with only one saucepan. <laughs> so if you find a piece of beef in the jelly, you won't blame me too much. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I gave all my saucepans away during the war. I gave them so many, they made half a spitfire. <laughs> Hancock's reply, it was called. <laughs> Old Schickle Gruber had reason to fear my contribution, I can tell you. <laughs> oh, yes, the war. You weren't living here during the war, were you, Mr. Hancock? No, I applied for overseas posting as soon as the war started. Ah, oh, how brave. Uh, where did you apply for? Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was there all during the war. Terrible hazards we underwent, men dropping like flies. Rum poisoning and sunstroke was terrible. <laughs> Saw a U-boat surface once, but we all hid in the hills and he went away. <laughs> but it shook us for a minute, I may say. Yes, it would do. It did. Uh, what about you, Mr. James? Are you in the forces? Who, me? Uh, you were in uniform? Oh, yes, yes. Had arrows all over it. <laughs> Yes, yes, it was the dress uniform of the Sherwood Yeomanry. Oh. Foot regiment with a very fine tradition. My efforts were, of course, confined to the home front. Yes, indeed, yes. It must have been quite nasty here at times. Yes, it was. We had many narrow escapes, as I suppose you must have had. Oh, my word, yes. I remember one when they threatened to send us back to England. <laughs> Panic right through the island. Half of us went native. They couldn't find us anywhere. <laughs> That's war, terrible thing. Quite, quite. 
I wouldn't like to go through it all again. It was the bombs we had to cope with most. The church roof suffered. Blast, you know. But we're still repairing it. You got any lead on it? Oh, no. no, no. <laughs> Oh, we dispensed with lead. So many thieves were after it. Yes, I know. Terrible. No principle, some people. Yeah. Uh, more rice pudding and evaporated milk, Vicar. Oh, no, thank you, my dear. I can't stand the sight of rice. We get so much of it outside the church, you know. Where do you think we got this? <laughs> Ow! Oh, I'm sorry. Was that your other foot? <laughs> mind if I had your portion? No, no, not at all. I love rice pudding. True, true. <laughs> She's always got a bucket full brewing on the stove. <laughs> Her eyes will start turning up at the corner soon, you mark my words. Yes, we suffered a lot of damage in these parts with the bombs, you know. Ah, yes, the air raids. I know just what you must have gone through. I went through it myself. We had a leaflet raid on the island once. Shocking damage. <laughs> Quite a lot of the chaps got it with bundles that didn't open. <laughs> if we'd been Americans, we'd have got the purple art. No doubt. No, 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 no. Yes, yes. They, they dropped quite a few unexploded bombs in this yard, I don't know. Is that a fact? Yes. <clears throat> they, they, found, they found an unexploded bomb only a fortnight ago. That's half a mile from here, I believe. Yes, I read about it. They uh, had the bomb disposal squad down. That's right. Oh, brave chaps. I was in the bomb disposal squad in Bermuda. I will remember ten of us were called out one night to dismantle a firework. <laughs> it was a trick beast, a jumping jack, it was. We didn't know where it was going to go. Still, we kept in our tanks with the hoods. All right. Yes, some bread pudding, because... No, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, would you mind if I had... It's all right. Go on. Get it down. <laughs> be none left but gannets. <laughs> a bit of experience I did bombs myself. I took a civil defence course. You know. I was in the ARP, you know. Oh, the old ARP. A piece of cabinet pudding, Vicar. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Stone me, no wonder you don't sleep. Great heavy pudding lying on your stomach. If you come walking past my room tonight with your arms stretched out in front of you, I don't care what they say about waking them up, I'll yell right down your ear hole. I'm sorry about this, Vicar. She's a bit of a handful, as you can see. Yes, oh yes. Well, I need a drink after that. Sid, pour us out a toddy. Down left, boy. We drunk it all. Oh, well, I'll just have to go down into the wine cellar and get another bottle. Of course, I've got crates down there, all vintage, you know. Is it old vintage? Oh, no, swipe me, yes, yes. Some of it's over six weeks old. <laughs> the good stuff, that is. The potato wine, it's a bit young. A fortnight ago, it was still in the ground. I'll uh, see what we've got for you. Come, William, to the wine cellar. William, to the wine cellar. Oh, hey, hey, is he gone? <laughs> yes, yes. Wait till I get him down in the cellar. I'll have a bottle of grave across your head, mate. <laughs> Excuse me, Vicar. Sydney, you'll entertain the vicar while we're corking the wine, won't you? Certainly, certainly, mate. Tell me, vicar. There's a man interested in church architecture. How much lead do you reckon there is on that big gothic one round the corner? A tub. Tub! What do you want me to go down to the cellar for? There's no wine down there. There never was. Don't give me that. You've got something down there. I know that. Every time you go down to fill the coal scuttle up, you come back reeking. Yeah, well, that's mine, Tub. It's all in a good cause. What have you got? There's a bottle of Arab Burgundy I picked up at Port Side on the way over. Mm, I bet that's strong. Strong? I use cast iron corks. <laughs> That'll be all right as long as we keep the label turned our way. You won't know. Now, go on. You go down first, because I'm frightened of the dark. Where are you? Where are you? Right in front of you. Well, let me hold your coat. I don't like coming down here. How many more steps? I'm on the eighth one. Eight from twelve, that's three left. Why? There's one missing. <laughs> Which one? Well, feel around with your foot. If there's nothing there, that's the one. Uh, right, I've got it. It's the next one. Good lad. Hey, hey, are you all right, Tub? William. Didn't it occur to you that your next one wasn't my next one? <laughs> Look at me. I can't see you. Then I shall describe what happened. <laughs> I was standing on step seven, one behind you. 
you inform me that it was the next step that was missing. Whereupon I put my leg over step eight that was there, <laughs> looking for step nine that was not there, landing on step ten that was there, but isn't now because it collapsed under my weight, <laughs> which accounts for my present position, bellied up to me, wasting half a ton of best kitchen nuts. <laughs> Lucky I've got my black evening dress on, otherwise I've had to get it clean. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Tub, I'll switch the light on. You'll do what? I'll switch the light on. You mean we've been falling about here in the pitch black and there's a light down here? Yeah, I had it put in when I had to keep coming down for the coal. Well, why didn't you tell me? I forgot. You forgot. Oh, I'm sorry, Tub. Never mind, William, we all make mistakes. I made one once. When? The day you walked in front of me, Carl, and I pulled up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I remember. Now, help me up and put that light on. Ah, that's better. So, this is the cellar. I've never seen it before. Haven't you? Well, let me show you around. That's the floor you're standing on, and there are the walls. <laughs> and don't tell me that thing above me is the roof. <laughs> Hey, are you sure you haven't been down here before? <laughs> no, no. I used to work for an estate agent. They taught me all about it. It's very roomy, isn't it? Almost as big as a bedroom. Yeah. Now, you can move your bed down here tomorrow. <laughs> now, I'm letting your room. What's that up there in the ceiling? Oh, that's, that's the manhole. You remember when you bought the place, it was just a jagged hole and you put a cover on it. Oh, yes. Well, what's that thing stuck in the floor underneath it? What thing? That thing. The big metal thing with the fins on it. What's this chalk writing on the side? 1942, Gottstraf, England, Heil Hitler. <laughs> is this yours? No, I don't know what it is. I just use it to strike me matches when I'm having a smoke. <laughs> but look, there's, there's great big dents all over it. Oh, yeah, that was me. I was trying to break it open with a pickaxe. You hit it with a pickaxe? You fool! Fancy doing a thing like that? Not ours. You might have damaged it. <laughs> Somebody might come and ask for it back. Oh, no, 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 Tub. They can't. 1942. If it's not claimed within six months, it becomes the property of the people who find it. It's ours, Tub. Oh, good. I've always wanted a metal thing with fins on. <laughs> Buffoon! Buffoon! <laughs> Buffoon! What good is... Do you mind? <laughs> what good is it to us? Dig it up and see how much you can get from the rag and bone man on it. Oh, well, you can't. I've tried. It's embedded too far on the ground. Oh, you two. Where's the wine? My tongue's hanging out up here. Can I give you a hand to decant it? No, no, no. Stay there, Vicar. Don't bother to come down. We're, we're just trying to select a bottle to suit your palate. Oh, dear, no. Oh, he's down. Oh, no. Good <laughs> heavens! What? Stand back. What is it? What's wrong? Over there, sticking out of the floor, an unexploded bomb. Yes, it's ours. We're claiming it. Treasure trove, you know. <laughs> it's a what? A bomb, an unexploded bomb. You mean... Yeah. I've been... I've been down since... Here. In... Down... All these years. <laughs> I'm afraid so. What? Here. <laughs> Damn it. All the... <laughs> Since... <laughs> Since... <laughs> With me upstairs. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh. I don't think Mr. Hancock is feeling well. Perhaps you ought to sit down. Yeah, come on, Tub, sit down, have a rest. Come on, old son, over here. Thank you. Not on the bum! <laughs> Go and reserve me a bunk in the underground station. We're getting out of here. Come, come, come now. This is no time to panic. It's a good enough time for me, mate. I'm off. <laughs> Notify the authorities so they can render it harmless. When I think of Professor Penny, they're hitting it with a pickaxe. Oh, <laughs> now, look here. We really ought to put something round it to take the blast in case it goes off. 
the ARP, they're always recommended sandbags. We haven't got any sandbags. Gooey, the treacle pudding's ready. <laughs> there you are. Put that round it. <laughs> A hydrogen bomb wouldn't get through a treacle pudding. <laughs> Now the slightest tremor might set it off. How much you reckon it weighs, Vicar? Uh, it's a very large one. I should say it's a two thousand pounder. Two thousand pound. Let's see. Scrap metal, fifteen bob underweight. <laughs> Iron, seventy-five bob. You reckon there's any lead in it? No, no, no. Oh, shame. That's uh, twelve hundred two thousand three carry one. It's forty-four plus cartridge. I'll give you twenty-five bob for it, Hancock. Sid, how can you start bashing at a time like this? A deadly high explosive weapon. I can go off any minute and both. Twenty-seven and six. <laughs> so, you're wasting valuable time. We must get to a telephone and call in the army. Yes, of course. Bill, I've got twenty-seven and six invested here. You stay in the cellar and mind it. Supposing it goes off? Well, catch as many bits as you can. <laughs> Hello, Fred. This is our lucky day. They found an old, unexploded German bomb in Hancock's cellar. What do you mean, so what? Use your loaf, boy. Haven't you always said if we could pull Hancock's house down, what a wonderful used car lot we could make? Well, and if we play our cars right, we don't have to pull it down. Look, there's two things that can happen. One, the army gets the bomb out and Hancock's got a house. Or two, they explode it and Hancock hasn't got a house and we've got a used car lot. Somehow, I think the army's going to have trouble with that bomb. Start buying cars, son. Start buying them. How long have we got to wait for the army to get here? Well, don't be impatient. They've got lots of things to do. Besides, there's not many of them left now. <laughs> well, surely they can scrape together half a dozen from somewhere. I expect they're all down the dance hall, flashing their ten quid a week about. <laughs> oh, stop grumbling. Well, it's no joke. It's been twelve hours since we phoned the war office. I'm fed up with camping out on the pavement. Remind me to write to the council. Put in the street lamps out at eleven o'clock. It's not right. I climb up the lamp post, I plug my electric razor in. <laughs> Halfway up my sideboards, and they switch them all off. <laughs> to put no finer point on it, it is a dead liberty. Why don't you spare a thought for poor Bill keeping guard over it? Oh, he's all right. Danger is only feared by people of high intelligence and imagination. He'll be snoring away, dreaming of cowboys and Indians. He doesn't know what it's all about. Hello? The army, they're here. All right, chaps, all out. The best. <laughs> Look lively and we'll be home in time for breakers, eh? <laughs> Sergeant Plunger. Sir. Get the arc light set up. Yes, sir. Right, chaps, cordon off the area, 200 yards. Good evening. Go away, please. This is not a sideshow. <laughs> Can't be responsible for civilians. This is an army show, Roger. No, no, no. Anthony, Anthony Hancock. <laughs> Roger's my brother. No, there won't be many people who know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want civilian chappies cluttering up the target area. Eh, what? Right, here, go home to bed. That's a good chap, eh, what? What's the point of going home to bed when I'm likely to be blown out of it? I just wouldn't be comfortable. Oh. I see, it's your house, the little beggar's hiding in. Yes, that's right, yes. <laughs> 23 railway cutting. Oh, bang on us. Oh, now, you can come and share. That's where it is. Not me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of it during the war. I did my bit. Overseas, I was. Really, sir? I didn't realise you were an old war horse. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, young fellow, my lad, I saw it all. France, North Africa, Italy, Tripoli, Japan, Malaya, Singapore, I saw it all. He was the projectionist at the Camp Newsreel Theatre. <laughs> oh. Well, we've got work to do. Evening, all. How's it going? Oh, not another civvy. Now, where is the bomb? In the cellar, and you take care of my house. You'll have to blow it up, mate. You'll never get it out. Oh, no, sir, we never detonate unless it's absolutely necessary. Oh. Now, we always prefer to remove a bomb intact and explode it somewhere else. Very difficult to get it. If I were you, I'd knock the house down. Run one of your tanks through it. You mind your own business. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. You get that bomb out without disturbing so much as a brick. 
Don't intend to spend the rest of my life kipping on a corporation pavement. <laughs> With me beard at the mercy of the electricity department, not this lad. <laughs> Tell me, sir, you sound as if you know something about bomb disposal. Oh, yeah, I've had loads of experience. Been working with high explosives for years. Oh, absolutely, first us. Well, I should be very grateful for any assistance, because quite frankly, this is my first bomb. <laughs> Away. Yes. I'm with the catering car, actually. <laughs> I knew it that as well. I've only been in a week. <laughs> because the older chaps didn't want to come. You know, their D-mob's coming up shortly and they didn't want to take a chance. Uh, they asked me if I'd come. <laughs> Wish I knew something about it, eh, what? <laughs> well, I think it's very brave of you. Oh, it's a bit of sport, isn't it? A bit of a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the university, Wallace, love it. One gets so fed up with pyjama parties, doesn't one? Now listen, Mush. Uh, mushers. <laughs> I refuse to have amateurs tampering with my bombs. I want a fully paid-up bomb man. Oh, don't be a spoil sport. <laughs> You've all got to get experience. I mean, as you go to spread your wings a bit. If you touch that bomb, we'll all be spreading our wings. <laughs> Don't worry. This gentleman has promised to help out if I go wrong. Certainly, mate. thing to do is evacuate the old road and blow the house up. Never. You can't touch that house. It's protected. That house is of historic interest. I say, is it real? Yes, it is. <laughs> that is the finishing line of the cheam pancake race, that is. <laughs> you blow it up, mate. It's an eyesore. It's an architectural disgrace to the borough. Lowers the tone of the old district. What we could do with there is a nice big used car lot. Go on, boy, blow it up. You can't blow it up. There is a human being inside there. He's there? Well, I say human being. <laughs> He's on the voters' list. Well, of course, that does alter things. I think we'd better have a look at the beast and size up the situation. Sergeant Plunger. Sir. Did you bring my swagger stick? Yes, sir. Good. I might have to poke the wretched thing a bit. <laughs> oh, and put the duck boards across the garden. I've got my swears on. <laughs> Forward, chap! <laughs> it's down in the cellar. See that? You never get your cranes down there, boy. You blow it up, son. Ooh, knock the house down. Get it out. I don't mind. Either way will do. Hasn't it occurred to you that he might be able to disconnect it, render it harmless, and leave it there? I say that's an idea. No, it's not. You can't render that type of bomb harmless. It works on an air spring. The slightest move and it'll go. That is definitely a blower upper, not a leave it where it is. <laughs> yes, but mind you, we Who could is the expert here? Well, you are. Well, shut up then. Come on and get cracking. <laughs> Excuse me, Lieutenant. I thought you and your men might be hungry, so I've made a fresh bucket full of spotted dick. Why, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Don't take any. She'll be most upset if you take any. That's her breakfast. <laughs> Come on, Andrew. We got down to the cellar and take a look. Oh, yes, splendors. Bill, lash yourself to the bomb. Somebody's come to blow it up. Come, come away from that bomb. There's a good chap. I'm in command here. Lieutenant Pumphrey Farnsworth, Royal Army Catering Corps. What are you going to do, fry it? <laughs> <laughs> Put that man under close arrest, Sergeant. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'm not in the army. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> now, let's have a look at this naughty little bomb. Mm. Oh, yes, yes. Which is the bit that goes bang? <laughs> Over here. That bit there. You run a wire around it to about 200 yards away, press the plunger, she blows up and you can go home. I reckon you could be in your pyjamas and off to a party within half an hour. <laughs> well, you make it sound awfully attractive. I think we'll do that, eh, Juan? I protest most strongly. I can't just go around blowing up houses willy-nilly. It's dangerous. He's right, you know. The flying debris might hit somebody. We'll have to remove it and explode it elsewhere. That's my boy. Well done. All right, then. You don't want to blow the house up in case somebody gets hit by the bricks and stuff, right? That's right. All right, then. That's it, then. Knock the house down, cart the bricks away, then blow it up. Yes, I think you're right. I'll get the pioneer card onto it right away. But this is illegal. The local authorities will have something to say about this. May I remind you I'm in charge here? Sergeant Landra? Sir. 
Uh, did we bring a bulldozer with us? Yes, sir. Uh, knock this shack down, will you? I can't look. Look at me mock Tudor Gable lying in the dust. Stand back. Oh, no. Not me asbestos conservatory with the imitation grapevine. <laughs> All these treasures lost to the nation forever. Well, that's it. Same out of the house. It didn't take long, did it? Half of it fell down when we took the front door off. <laughs> well, now to detonate the bomb. Uh, Sergeant Plunger. Sir. Have you wired the bomb for detonation? Sir. Right. Stand back, everybody. Sergeant Plunger. Sir. Press the Plunger, Plunger. <laughs> Hey, the tail's shot off. A bit of paper's fallen out. And what does it say? Uh, um, uh, I think it's in French. He always says that if you give him anything to read, it's a cover-up. <laughs> give it to me. Oh, yes. How very interesting. So you've knocked my house down for this. What does it say? This bomb is the property of the BBC Television Scenery Department. Don't you remember the man you bought the house from? He was a BBC producer. He did all those war plays. He must have brought it home as a souvenir or something. You pulled my ass down for a dummy bomb. I'll have the law on you. I say it's touchy, isn't it? <laughs> now they're coming out on a cold night like this. No gratitude at all, some people. All right, Jeff, nothing more to do here. Put the arc lights on the lorry, right? Oh, like Hancock. Say like yeah. Look, boy, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I can see you're down and out. No money, nowhere to go. I'll give you 50 nickel for the land. It's no good to you without the house, and with the 50 nickel, you can find some digs, make a fresh start. Oh, it's very kind of you, Sid, and I do appreciate it. One only finds one's real friends in times of trouble. Is it a deal? Yes. Good boy. Fred? Yeah? Drive the cars in, boy. <laughs> Alfred, to Sydney James Carmart. What a beautiful sight. 20,000 acres worth of second-hand cars piled nose to nose. What a bit of luck they found that dummy bomb. Here, Sid. Was that dummy bomb like this one here? You'll blow me another one up like must have been collecting them. <laughs> Got straight for England Isle, Hitler. Are you sure it's a dummy, Sid? Of course it is. Unscrew the tail. You see the label inside. Here, Sid. Listen. Run for it! <laughs> Hello, Sid. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> what a pity about all your cars, isn't it? <laughs> Go on. Yes, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Yes? Just for you, of course. Yes. A special favour, a friend. Yes, yes, yes. I'll give you 25 quid for the scrap metal. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. Very comical. Ah, ha, ha. Thank you. 